Welcome to Never Lose Focus, where clarity and vision navigates and fulfills purpose and destiny. I'm your host, Dominique Balcu Fairbanks, and thank you so much for tuning in. We have such a wonderful program planned for you, and I want to thank, for, thank you for all your prayers, your love, and your financial support, because without your continued financial support, OCN and Never Lose Focus would, cannot do it without your help. So we want to thank you. You make it happen. Well, we like to continue where we left off uh, in our series regarding hypocrisy. And I entitled this series as Hippocritus. Sounds like a Jurassic World creature, right? <laughs> well, actually it is. When you really think about it, in today's society, we are constantly looking and searching high and low for the truth. But there's so many pretenders out there. There's so many people that are disenchanted with who they are. Uh, they may come from uh, broken homes or, or, or damaged situations, and it causes them to put on a mask. And, and, and all the Hollywood and all the entertainment, and we're constantly looking at other people and believing that we have to look like them and we have to act like them in order to be accepted, in order to be approved. But you are already made in God's perfect image and all you have to do is look in the mirror of God's word, and you will find out exactly who you were created to be. Amen? So let's start off with the last slide that we uh, referenced uh, regarding our series. So we can look at the first slide. And I define hypocritis as a disease which causes a person to be dead to themselves, to please, lie, manipulate, and deceive others. It's an inflammation of one's character that is not normal or true. Amen? Where are you in this definition? Are there parts of your life that you try to keep hidden and tucked away, you know, because you're ashamed and you don't feel people would accept you if they knew what happened to you? Would you lose a sense of your femininity? Would you lose a sense of your masculinity? If people truly know all that you had to go through, all that you had to endure. So you really have to come to terms with your identity. You really have to know that every person, there's not one person on this earth that has the same fingerprint, that has the same blueprint, that has the same DNA that you have. God miraculously created you to be unique. And that's why you're here. That's why you were brought into this world, because you have a specific calling. You have a specific purpose and plan for your life. And you can't find that purpose. And it, it cannot be fulfilled if you're busy searching and looking high and low at everyone else. You can't be distracted. And that's what we shared a few programs ago. We talked about distraction. We said distraction is the attraction of the world. And you can't continue to allow yourself to be dissatisfied, to be disenfranchised with your own life. When you look in that mirror, it doesn't matter who's told you this or who said negative things to you or who's damaged or, or has abused your emotional status, your emotional sensitivity and the different things that you endured in your life. You can't, you can't allow the viruses the cancers of life to contaminate you and to deteriorate and tear you down. And you can't allow yourself to hang around people that are, trying, that are constantly trying to tear you down. Because if you can't be around people that will love you and support you, you don't need to be around those people. So you have to really look at yourself. We're, we're talking about hypocritis. We're talking about being a person who has a need, an inner need, to feel inadequate, that they have to put on a face, a mask, in order for society to accept them. Amen? And many times on Facebook, 
half the time the people you meet on there, <laughs> they're not even being, they're telling you a whole bunch of lies. They're hiding behind the keyboard, behind the screen, and they're putting all these different, especially on these dating websites, they're putting up pictures and poses that are photoshopped and airbrushed and everything. It's not them. And then when you finally meet them, you just want to go turn around and run. <laughs> and I, because what they presented to you was false. What they presented to you was not true. And so we need to get back to the truth. We need to get back to a place of comfort and peace. There's nothing, there's nothing can compare to being in a place of comfort and just letting your hair down and just relaxing and not caring about your makeup and all these different things and not caring about walking on eggshells and, you know, trying to satisfy people and their different, you know, uh, the, the different uh, position and status and power and, you know, you're trying to satisfy these people and please them because you think you have to be something other than yourself. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie. And so you cannot believe the lies that the enemy will try to infiltrate in your mind, in your thinking, through the media, and through the things that you hear, the things that you see. You can't do that. You have to look through the mirror of the Word of God and find out who you were called to be, who God created you to be, because you were miraculously created in his image. Amen? So let's go to the next uh, slide. Christians fall into sin, but hypocrites dive into sin. <laughs> so you can clearly see the difference. You know, when you become a Christian, you find out that there are things in, in this world, you know, you live a life righteously, you, you live to please the Lord, but there's some things that you just still have not... You, this, you are in a process of being transformed. You're, you're in a process of being changed in the image of God, and that's a process. So there's going to be times when you mess up. You're not going to be perfect. But this is the key. You should be better today than you were yesterday. Amen? You should be better tomorrow than you were today because we keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Now, in the case of hypocrites, they dive into sin. <laughs> They, that's their nature. That's, what, that's who they feel they need to be and do because they're not being themselves. They're trying to impress people. They're trying to be something that they're not. Amen? So if we go to the next passage of Scripture, 1 John 3, 9 says, The person who has been born into God's family does not make a practice of sinning because now God's life is in him. So he can't keep on sinning. Note, it does not say can't sin, for this new life has been born into him and it controls him. He has been born again. He has been born again. Think about this. As a Christian, you do not practice sinning, at least the biblical Christian, <laughs> because there's a lot of people out there who believe they're Christian, but by their lifestyle, says otherwise. Their lifestyle says that they look just like sinners. So today on this program and in the programs to come, you have to understand that when you go before the Lord, when you answer to him, he knows your heart. Because a lot of people say, oh, God knows my heart. But you, the question I ask you is, do you know your heart? God knows everything. So if you constantly are the person that says, God knows my heart, then that's just a form of, because I used to use it. I used to say that too. Oh, well, God knows my heart. Oh, well, you know, I may not do this, I may not do that, but God knows my heart. But that's really not sincere. That is just an excuse that I personally have used in the past. <laughs> Praise God, not anymore for a number of years. Because I, as Christians, we need to focus on God. He is the measurement. He is the barometer for how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to walk, how we're supposed to talk. We're supposed to be followers. We're supposed to be disciples of Christ. Amen? So you have to understand that God knows your heart, but the reality is you need to ask God to reveal what's inside of your heart, truly. You know, and um, you just really have to be honest with the Lord. Amen? So we have to think about that. 
Because if you look at your life and you're practicing things that are ungodly, then you have to question whether you are really manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Are you walking in the things of God? That's a big, fat question mark you have to ask yourself. I've had to ask myself that, you know, because I have to ever say, well, you know, if you read the book of Romans, you know, Paul is constantly say, saying that he does things that he doesn't want to do. It's just this, this warfare, this battle between the flesh and the spirit. But when you yield, when you surrender, that's the key word today, surrender. When you surrender your heart to the Lord, he will take over. But the problem is we want to stay on the throne. <laughs> we want to stay on the throne. We don't want God to be on the throne. We want to stay on the throne. We want to call the shots. We still want to be able to dip and dab and, 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 and drink and sip and all these different things. We still want to live like the world because there is something inside of us that is a shame. There's something that has not totally surrendered unto the Lord. Amen? So let's look at the next uh, passage. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark, let me say it again, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Mm. And what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Think about that. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. That's Luke 12, 2 through 5. So we have to ask ourselves, are we man pleasers? Or are we a God pleaser? Hebrews 4, 12 says this. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. So who are we fooling? Think about that. Who are we fooling? 2 Corinthians 4.2. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given since God in his mercy has given us the new way, we never give up. We reject, renounce all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try, listen to this, we don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God. And all who are honest know this. Who is Paul talking about here? He's talking about real Christians. Amen. And of course, we have to grow to a certain level, a certain um, level of maturity to get to that point. Now, there's three types of people in life. It's the sinner, the saved Christian, and the hypocrite. So as you can see in the chart here, the sinner... Is, is pretty much, if you look at hot, cold, or lukewarm, the sinner is cold. And see, God appreciates that. <laughs> he appreciates you just staying cold sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people that, that they take God seriously, but they know they don't want to play with God. So when they're ready, they want to give their heart to him wholeheartedly. So, that, so when you look at sinners, at least they have the respect to stay cold. Amen. And then the Christians, by all means, is supposed to be hot, piping hot. I mean, when you go to a restaurant and you order food cooked to your specifications and they come out and bring you this delicious plate of food and you taste it and, it, and it's, it's warm. It's not even hot. It's like it's been sitting in the, on the countertop somewhere. I mean, how terrible is that? And then, of course, you don't want to be rude and obnoxious or anything because if you send the play back, then you're afraid they're going to do something worse to it. Amen? But when you have a certain level of expectation, even just as people that go to restaurants, so how much more when we serve a true, a powerful, uh, uh, 
Lord and Savior. I mean, he's almighty. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. And then we, we come and we present to him different deeds, different things that we've done in our life, and it's nothing but lukewarm temperature. It amounts to nothing. It amounts to nothing. So just as disgusted as you were when someone brought you a $30 plate of food and it's cold, and if <laughs> you're like, I don't want to eat this. This is not what I ordered. This is not what I expected. Well, when you give your heart to Christ, what he's expecting is a, a progress. He's expecting an ongoing progress and growth in him. We're not supposed to look like we were yesterday. We're supposed to look better than we were yesterday. And we're supposed to just keep pressing and moving and growing and, and just being glorified in him. And it's exciting. It truly is exciting. Life, is, life does not begin until you really have surrendered your heart to God. So who wants uh, 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 a warm, lukewarm cup of coffee? You know, who wants that? No one. It's ridiculous. Either you want it hot or you want it cold. So when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to your life, pursue him with all the fire and passion and desire that's in your heart because he deserves it. He died for us. He died for us. The love that he shed on the cross. The, I, mean, the, I mean, that's the least we can do. That's the least we can do. Just to show him our love and our gratitude. Amen. So, looking at the screen, why pretend? Why do people pretend? Why, what is the motive? Why can't we be ourselves? Is it because our dignity is stolen? Have we possibly been raped, molested, made fun of, bullied, pressured, intimidated? Are we operating in fear? Is, do we have a poor self-image? Has our image been damaged by being victimized in some way? Uh, is it our ego? Is it pride? And a lot of times, this pride is, is huge. Pride will keep you out of the kingdom of God. Because pride, and I'll show in later uh, lessons, pride is the enemy of God. Pride, like love, is how God operates and flows. Pride is how Satan operates. Pride is the gasoline that fuels satanic schemes and plots. Praise glorifies God. Pride glorifies Satan. So you have to self-examine yourself. You have to look at yourself and say, wait a minute. Am I operating in pride? Am I my ego so huge and so big that I can't admit when I'm wrong? You have to really look at yourself. And only the power of the Holy Spirit can soften and melt your heart. You really have to look at your life in that aspect because it's only until you eradicate pride and become more humble because the more humble you are, the more godlike you become. And the more prideful you are, the more like Satan you become. And a lot of people don't like looking at it like that. That's just the way it is, black and white. You know, let's stay out of the gray. It's black and white. And that's what we want to emphasize here on Never Lose Focus. Our whole goal with this program is to remove and to uh, dismantle and tear down all the distractions, all the different facades and all these different things that are hindering people from seeing the truth and the reality behind the plots and schemes of the enemy. And that's what we want to stay focused. We want to keep Christ, the center, the navigation that will direct us into true freedom and deliverance in every area of our life. So getting back to the slide here, why, are we, or why do people pretend? Is it because of shame, guilt, pride? Are we man pleasers? Think about it. These different things come from the outside or the inside, when you think about it. World, that's our outside influence. The world means it's secular, it's void of God. Are we controlled by the culture? Think about this. Who have you given the remote control over your life to? Temptation is like an alarm clock, and we'll discuss that a little bit more in detail. Repentance comes from the inside. And ultimately, God wants your heart, but Satan wants your will. Amen? 
So let's think about this. Let's, let's talk about this a little bit. When you're talking about the different things that we face in life, when you talk about the world, yes, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, God loved the world. God loves the people in the world. But he's not embracing the culture and the negativity of the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen? So he, of course, he loves us. He came and he died for us. But we have to realize that we can't allow the culture to dictate how we feel, what we do, what we see, how we speak. We can't allow the culture to do that. And, and unfortunately, in America, our culture is very much has embraced and adopted the culture of Babylon. The empire of Babylon, the, the, one of the greatest empires that has obviously fallen, uh, the Babylonian empire. And they fail for many a reasons, amen? But we'll get into that later as well. But our culture, if you look at our culture, it has uh, mimicked and it has been modeled after the Babylonian culture. Now, when you talk about temptation, Temptation, why, do we, why are people acting um, hypocritically? Temptation, temptation to me, is like, it's, an alike, it's like an alarm clock. It's, it, it, it walks in and around us, seeing what it can awaken within us, the, any lustful desires. It tries to stir up different things in and around in our life through distractions. So, if it's walking and presenting uh, maybe like for men, for example, because pornography is just rapid in this country and as well as all around the world. So if, if the temptation, if he's constantly moving and, and having these women appear in front of you through magazines, through television, through music, media, commercials, whatever it may be, you see, you have to understand we all have three gates by which information comes. Through our eyes, information comes through our eyes, through what we look and meditate upon. And information also comes through our ears, by the things that we listen to, music, the different things that we listen to, whether it's people, whether it's uh, guys that are trying to get my attention as a woman, or you know, the different uh, uh, sweet nothings, if you will. And through the mouth. So the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate. These are the three different, different areas that the enemy tries to infiltrate negativity to try to get you to a place where you'll be drawn and lured away. So temptation is like an alarm clock. It just sneaks around and it, it walks around just looking to see what it can stir up on the inside of you through the distractions of this world. And then if the alarm goes off, ding, 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 then con conception was, has been birthed, right? <laughs> So the word of God says sin, you know, temptation is when it's conceived first in the heart. It's not necessarily the act because people are committing sin just walking up and down the street based on their thought life, based on what they have inside of their heart. And eventually, and, and eventually it's inevitable. The things that you meditate on your, in your heart, the things that you meditate upon through your eyes, your ears, and your mouth, those things are going to manifest. It's going to happen. You can't hide. It's going to manifest. So when you look at your life, when you have those different, the last, uh, last couple of programs, we talked about the people that are in our circle, those close, tight family and friends that speak the truth in our life, that speak the truth through love. We have to have that tight niche of people that are in our corner. So they are basically the Lord has put them in our life to speak the truth. They're like fruit inspectors. So of things that have been percolating inside of my heart that I've been meditating in the dark and looking at this in the darkness and, and when, the do when the doors are closed in the private closets of my life, it's going to manifest. It's going to leak out. You can't hide. There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere. So stop running. Amen? Just stop running. Because the fruit is manifesting, the fruit, dreams, nightmares, whatever it may be. These things are coming forth. You can only suppress so many things. So you have those people in your life to tell you the truth. 
well, why did you do this? Well, did you see that? Did, are you aware that you did this? And you're like, oops. That's like a reality check. That's like ding, 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 ding. Whew. I need to stay in prayer. I need to get back into prayer. I need to get into the presence of God. I need to spend more time praising God and singing worship songs unto the Lord. I need to really devote my heart and my life solely and, and, and committed to the Lord. I have to be sold out to the Lord. Amen. So this last slide I want to show you is uh, Dr. Jack, who's my spiritual mentor and parent. We discussed some things, and um, he shared with me the different areas in which American has taken on the Babylonian culture. And the distraction is the attraction of the world, yes, but these are the different specific areas that he shared with me, and it's straight out of the Word of God. Amen? Three major areas. Witchcraft. That can be found in Isaiah 47. Idolatry, Jeremiah 50. And forms of idolatry, Hollywood, sports, money, race, ethnicities, computer games, pornography, abortion. These are just examples in which our nation has embraced. In these last days, our nation has embraced these things. And partying, the debauchery, Daniel 5, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, drugs, par uh, pharmacia. Uh, blasphemy, profane language. So, c coming away from the slide, and as in these closing moments, if we're living in a nation that is now embracing, unfortunately, all these evil things, and has just clearly taken the Word of God out of the nation and out of the, the Ten Commandments, out of the school and such, we really have to come to a place of alarm. We, we, we have to come to a place of repentance. We have to come to a place where we are humble ourselves before the Lord. And in these future programs here on Never Lose Focus, we're going to dig in further. We're going to dig in deeper into the things that we do. We're going to dig in deeper as to why hypocrisy is so prevalent in this nation. We're going to dig into and uncover the true purpose the true purpose and plan that the enemy has devised with the weapon of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is simply not just putting on a mask and pretending to be something that you're not. It is actually a strategic weapon used by the enemy to come and wreak havoc in your life. It's he has come to destroy, to try to attempt to destroy the um, plans of the enemy, to destroy your identity. Hypocrisy is a, truly a weapon of mass destruction used by the enemy. It's not just something cute or fancy or whatnot. This is something that's deep. And so we're going to look forward to the next, uh, next program, and we're going to dig deeper and deeper and uncover all these different things that the enemy is trying to throw our way so that we can press and navigate into true freedom and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Amen? So next time, I will see you here on Never Lose Focus. Love you.